Okie doke. We're getting set here for ye old squat ups. Guilty spark today. Fun times, fun times. Alrighty, let's go ahead and break down Guilty Spark. Alright, welcome on in to another Squad Ops One Life event. Today we have Guilty Spark. Uh, this One Life Op is on Anvil. Ozzy's Defending against insurgents. Uh, the the orb is in play. It is defended. Uh, the dig site is being defended by Aussies. INS are trying to uh, clear them out. By any means necessary. More or less. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at the map here. And I'll break down a little bit of what the op is going to be like. Uh... Or guilty spark. Oh, dang on it. <laughs> Why is the hook rate so bad? Great fast. That'll fix that. Okay. Uh right. So there is an orb at Charlie five four six. Aussies are defending the perimeter. They cannot go north of the river. And they cannot leave this three grid by three grid zone. Oh, you can see the commander there trying to fix the, uh, the situation here. But basically, this is the limit minus, I could draw those better. I could draw that better. Oh god, <laughs> maybe I can't. But basically they can't go north of the river. So they're staying down here. And these guys are going to uh, hold out. We can see a little bit of the INS plan also here. Uh, INS have the option of starting north and or south. They can split their force up uh, and start between the two areas. And their goal is to clear out everyone from the orb. But if someone touches the orb, the people who are dead in that squad can respawn at Juliet 7. They get a transport truck and they can roll back in. There is a respawn mechanic for this operation, but it's not a guaranteed respawn. Someone actually has to touch the orb. So let's go zoom on in. Let me show what you're talking. Let me uh, show you what we're talking about here. Uh, let's see. There's the orb. So once you get in close to touch the orb, you will be able to respawn. Orb. 
Now, structures and explosives can't be within 33 meters of the orb. Per the dock. We got uh, players jumping in right now. That's a cool effect. And Aussies are now setting up their defenses. Uh, Aussies, for their defense, rolling standard squad plus four engineers. And they get an extra medic per squad. So the four, uh, four engineers are in the armory. And they also have two Bushmasters, as you can see here. The triple mag 58s variant is what we're using today. And they get 800 bill to place sandbags to defend their position. Nothing else. For INS, looks like we have a southern start for the INS here. INS have a bunch, well, they have a few more kits. Uh, standard squad plus a medic. So that's two medics, two ARs, two FTLs. They also have two hats, RPG-7 variants, and one lat. They have a transport techie, and that's it. They got a second transport techie if, the, if a squad is respawned using the ascendancy. Uh, the, sorry, the annual rebirth mechanic, which is the respawn mechanic for this operation. Once again, to respawn, you must touch the orb. We are seeing a general southern start here for INS. INS starting grid is Bravo 9. And it looks like we are... It's funny, someone drew an arrow. I wonder if we're going to have someone try to go up here as, INS, as Aussies, which they can't do. Aussies can't go north of the river. It does look like we're going to have some Aussies push out, push out, though. They have to stay in these grids, Bravo 4 to Delta 6. So these nine grids, they must stay in these grids and south of the river. It's still a lot of area to cover. And it's going to give them a lot of defense capability. Now, granted, they're only going to be able to put sandbags inside the inner defense. And I think the inner defense zone is pretty, you know, caved in, too. I don't think you're going to see sandbags on the ridge lines. You might. I would kind of think you start, you only double wall sandbags inside the low ground. You give yourself something to fall back through. I could be wrong about that. I've been wrong about stuff in the past. <laughs> Players moving around here trying to figure out what they're going to do for their defense. I'm going to go back down to Inus South. Players started to spawn in here. like lawn darts is going to roll over here and uh, get his guys ready for a brief. Uh, take a look at the squads here, the platoons, lawn darts commanding, INS round one, potato salad, killer J, and Seneca. And then we have Inky running Aussie round one with K9, sorry, Dr. K9, Tootie Root, and Bow. Or players still joining. The server. And you can too. Uh, if you're interested in playing this op. And you've got all the uh, mods and stuff. It's pretty quick. Just join the pre-operation channel. And an event admin will give you. Uh, all the details you need to connect. These events are open to anyone. Well. Almost anyone. Basically everyone. Uh, you know, 18 plus maturity required. Plus you need the mods too. You may not be able to download the mods in time unless you got a god tier connection to, uh, you know, Steam. 
your local Steam CDN. So, uh, looks like we are going to have a brief here for INS. So we're going to go ahead and. Uh, Hail on. Okay, we're going to go ahead and listen in here as players come from their spawn point, oh, no, getting their kits yeah, figured. It's all about uh, each and every one of you guys. And we'll uh, listen in. To, uh, Operation Guilty Spark. We have the INS, and uh, we're here to perform a ritual. The uh, site that we'll be forming that ritual at will be a very personal uh, experience for anyone who makes it there. And actually, the first person who does it is the Mortemark. That's in Charlie 543. Squad leader, if you want to put an attack marker down on that to uh, highlight exactly what I'm talking about. That Mortemark is a uh, an orb. What is an orb? It's a, a big silver shiny ball that makes a noise. Your mission, after killing as many Australian infantrymen on the way in, is to get as close to that as you can, touching distance, uh, say blood for the blood gods, and then type respawn into your console. If you achieve that, everyone else who is dead in your squad, except you, gets to respawn at uh, and main and get back into the fight. And uh, you'll go down the history books uh, and all the glory, etc., etc. Um, no explosive are allowed to be used within 33 meters of the orb, so just try and be careful where you're throwing your grenades and back rockets, etc. Uh, in order to try and get one of you lucky gentlemen uh, up to that uh, that orb, and it's something I'm not actually allowed to do as the commander, uh, we're going to have a, a pretty straightforward plan: uh, platoon line west to east, moving north. Western element would be Seneca squad. Center part of our platoon's killer and the eastern uh, element is potato. Uh, you'll see three red arrows to our north. Those are approximate. Um, the infantry triangle, yellow triangle markers, uh, the sort of key bits of terrain I would expect, you know, Australians to be trying to hang on to. Uh, a lot of this is about fire and move maneuver, uh, spreading out, not all being killed by the one long range grenade, um, getting lucky, maybe taking out some of their vehicles that they'll have. But really the key thing is to, to remain aggressive. Um, if you just hide in a bush the whole round, then, uh, then we're not going to be very successful as a platoon. So just remember, you know, fire and move. Um, now, you guys can't see, maybe I'll put down a red. Right, this line here is low ground-ish. Um, so the idea is we, we get up to the high ground just before that, get some basis of fire going, and then we'll start bounding across either buddy pairs, fire teams, or, or indeed squads to get into that low ground. Uh, and then we'll come up again onto that uh, high ground again where the Charlie 654 yellow triangle markers are. Uh, once we're up that close, it really just boils down to uh, each and every one of you, you know, hitting your shots and um, not getting too rattled. The enemy obviously has defender's advantage, so keep that in mind. But other than that, uh, the main priority is for us to, to have fun, kill as many of the other team as we can, and get one of our uh, brothers onto the orb. Any questions? All right, sweet. Nothing heard. Um, chain of command, if I meet an unfortunate demise, will be Seneca, then Killer, then Potato. And then after that, whichever fire team leader seems to be making the most sense. All right, guys, let's get ready for life. Valid opinion about your chain of command there. All right, so INS just going to form a platoon line. Uh, based on the map, looks like it's going to be about a grid wide, which is fine. Uh, key terrain. Let's go uh, up here real quick. Um, let's see, I think... This is, yeah, so this is the line that uh, Londarts wants to take a major pause at. Major land feature, well, minor to major land feature here is this hill. It's kind of the most elevated point in the entire area. If you can get ARs on this hill, maybe an additional AR from another squad, or maybe you hold like a, like a nearby hill, like maybe this line right here to cover east. This hill's probably better to cover western uh, approach here on the top of this plateau. But you can make some big progress. And the low ground really forms on the right. But this slant right here is a marked 
It kind of is. This could be an Aussie Mark II, so I'm not entirely sure. Uh, we do have some sandbags coming up here on the edge. Which I'm not a huge fan of, but you do have to double stack them to provide some cover up here. So I guess I get it. I would think you'd try to, you know, stretch out your sandbags a little bit more. Maybe if you add them to this naturally, like, you can crouch down behind this terrain anyway. You go from having to crouch behind it to just being able to stand behind it. Just, you know, angle off the back end of the sandbags. We're kind of getting a little briefing here. We may or may not be able to listen to this. I'll ask. Any chance for a cross team void briefing? All right. Nice. Thank you. All right. We got a briefing from Inky here for Aussies. Kill the spark. Mission is to protect the orb that's near the skull markers of the map. We are going to divide us ourselves into three squads. Pau, Turi, and K9. Pau squads. Look at this loser, right? Okay, he finally stopped. Thank goodness. Pau. That's gonna be located Bravo 643. It's gonna be Bow's encampment. So, Bow oh. that at all costs. Bow's gonna be on the low ground? Disposable one vehicle to help him out on that strategy. Hmm. K9 is gonna be northern block. He's gonna watch the main road. If Bow gets under attack, K9 will relieve him with one of the vehicles. And Turi stays here near the orb, watching mainly northeast. Interesting. The rain is kind of open, and enemy has same weapons as us, caliber-wise. So keep away from long sight lines if you can, and attack on short range. But we have multiple ARs and good fire from the Vix, so use your supportive weapons to. Vehicles are going to be super key rifles to if they can stay alive on the close range fights. If the enemy touches the orb, they'll get a respawn, but they don't win the game instantly, so just keep fighting if the enemy respawns. And fall back closer to the orb if you get un overwhelmed in your positions north or south. But keep the enemy's heads down and we should be able to finish them off on the close range fight. And remember to have fun. All right, your squad leaders will brief you more precisely. I think we're going to get a little and let's go. live call here soon. Bow to Davik, K9 to Davik, and Turi to their positions. Go, go, go. Thanks for putting that in crosstalk. All right, that was super cool. Great use of the cross team VoIP there, able to catch that briefing. We're gonna give them, I think we're gonna give uh, Aussies a little time to get into their positions and then we'll probably go live. We'll go back down to we have, uh, vehicles, so they have INS. A, they might get in behind us as we can. INS in the tactical blob resting uh, formation here. So if I heard that right, one squad here, one squad here, one squad here. The vehicles are going to be on the road. They're going to push a vehicle up to here, I'd imagine. Maybe a vehicle goes down. Let's go, boys. Well, we'll see in a second. Live is called. Round one be of Guilty Star uh, Spark begins. Here we see both the vehicles being crewed. Bow getting his guys to jump in there. K9 rolling towards Bravo 4 2. Uh, Bravo 4 2. I don't know how much visibility that's really going to grant. I guess they're going to deploy the vehicle 
they're gonna get on the rooftops. These guys are gonna be out of position, I think. Battle bus strategy is gonna be required here. Meanwhile, south, we have Bao and his squad rolling their Bushmaster towards this particular bunker. They gotta reposition that thing to be able to do something with it. That is not gonna be a helpful position. And they have to spread out too. What is there to even hide behind here? Not quite sure. Let's go over to INS as they are sprinting like mad to get northern... some northern ground. Uh, on the west side here, command moving with this element. I'm, uh, I wonder if there's actually enough elevation to trade some fire here. There's definitely going to be that elevation when they hit this hill. And these guys are going to be stuck without having, they have to have the vehicle. They've hidden the vehicle though, but they're building sandbags. They're going to come up to the hill. Let's see what happens here. Frog is going to spot this out immediately. And the first shots are fired. Crash Trash throwing his AR up the hill here. Alzadi gets winged pretty hard. Return fire just now starting. Alzadi has to go prone and hide. Frost and Diamond look like they're going to run back to the Bushmaster. Already has a driver? No, they're going to fall back. They're going to try to they're going to try to fall back east and get elevation here, I think. They're going to try to extend that defensive position. Other reactions? Nothing. There's a big hole right here. Unfortunately, that means that there's going to be a, a massive transition that Tutti Root is going to have to play here to get to the southern line of defense. Meanwhile, Killer J has fallen off and they've left this big, huge 200 meter gap here. And they're going to push, they're going to push this advantage east. So the contact here The Bushmaster got moved out. If they can snipe this Bushmaster, that's a big win. And it does look like... I guess we can get command comms. I've been experimenting not having them, but... Here we go, Alpha. Getting into position. They've smoked off the angle. Clear back, bless. He's going to try to... I can't even see the vehicle anymore. How is he going to see it? Maybe Alpha gets oh zipped. Oh my god, I almost died. Jeez. They've... This could be Aussie smoke, and that's actually a really good play to try to save their vehicle, but they're not using it. Oh, look at this. Three have pushed a fire team all the way up to the high ground. They're going to get lit up. Matter of fact, they're already getting lit up. Yeah, Roger, I see that. Enemy contact north, 200 meters. All right, platoon, it's at least a squad here. We've got to our north and our northeast. Two is going to advance off this. Three needs to push forward here and support this fire team. On the guys in the low ground. Hey, firm, we're going to take these guys. There we go, back soon. Now we got AR fire coming from the other hill. Our Oedipus almost gets his head taken off. Copy. There's the first kill. The cheese man puts SKS around into diamond. That was part of this defense over here. I'm pretty sure. Look at Crash Trash. Why is he pushing up by himself? Maybe diamond was with them. Big Rago takes down Frost. And that's that second uh, element here. RPG goes in, 
They're gonna. They try to send it on a sandbag group, I guess. Not quite sure what that was aiming for, but look, they're remanning the Bushmaster. RPG goes in short and it hits the terrain. Press Trash makes it back to the uh, Bushmaster. And they position another RPG, misses by meters. Nightmare takes out Felix. Room temp I2 takes out Chick. Poyo Mahato takes out Morik with a grenade throw. And that is because the rest of the platoon on the east side are in close contact. They came up out of these this low ground here and ambushed. And they have a Bushmaster for support. The Bushmaster, I don't think, has made itself aware yet or made itself known yet, but it's just sitting there. Gals close in to Nightmare. Nightmare crawling up. Greg Pants nails him with an RPK. Thorn takes Greg Pants out in turn. Poyo is right up on this. He lost his buddy just a second ago. Poyo with that grenade kill earlier has gotten a grenade on Archer and Raiden, and they're both bleeding, but they should both be stable. Contact dying down here as this Oz Force, SL, Charlie five, two, one. as these Aussies are trying to fall back here. NSA spy and Skrevsky legging it. Archer, um, three, squad two, just be Thorn and Raiden have to crawl. Uh, they stand up. Does Poyo see it? I don't think he does. Copy of audio. Thorn behind cover now. Ryan stands up. There's the vehicle moving. Vehicle backing up. And you Aussies are going to fall back hard into the compound. Let's get a center. Yeah, so the entire Western group fell back. They're now joined into the defense. Their vehicle, they left it down on the low ground. Oh, the, <laughs> the Bushmaster is mounting up this group that was stuck down here. Hopefully they don't fall off this bridge. Oh, we're driving up. Oh, fuck it. Oh. <laughs> and there is no easy way to put it. This vehicle is going to have a hard time. Just everyone look right. Look left. They could just light this thing up at any point. INS not doing it. And the vehicle's going to get away? Well, it is just going to sit here. Here we go. Now they're going to light it up. Ryan's going to hop out. They're going to dump the infantry out here. Bartok's going to stay in the vehicle. This is the big line that I was expecting to see. It's a little bit wider than I was thinking it was going to see. Here's the problem. They're going to have to advance. RPG was fired at a Bushmaster, but it missed left 10 meters. Kati taking out Bao. Squad lead down, I think. Yeah. And smoke's being deployed. So that INS can leapfrog. Meanwhile, east side, they have elevation to mask their movement. But they're still getting pinned down by K9. Never mind, K9's down. Room temp took him out of the Bushmaster turret. But Frederick might have a thought to... Oh, look at that ghosting. Jesus. 
Predator might have a thought to try to get a shot on this thing. He's hat. He's got a tandem warhead. Three is super bunched together, but they're maintaining fire superiority to allow the other elements to move. Three, I'm gonna put out uh, red, uh, blue smoke about to your north, about 200 meters. If you can suppress that, I can move my uh, squad forward. They're gonna mark enemy position with blue smoke. Potato cell, it takes out Bartok. Rough. Bartok was gunning for one of the, um... Bushmasters for the longest time there. Three, I'm my guys to the northwest. Thorn putting that AR fire on target, for real. Suppressing. Thank you, bud. That sounds like a Bushmaster. Someone soloing the Bushmaster up the right-hand side. I think he's going to try to draw a fire. I don't know what this guy's doing. He lost his... I think Senga or Semga lost Bartok, and he's trying to get back into the defensive fold here. He's risking it hard. Taking a bunch of shots. He should be fine inside the Bushmaster unless he gets hit by a rocket. Oh, nice little rag dolling for friendly there. They've parked the two bushmasters together now. INS on the west flank, using the low ground to try to get some ad advantage here. They get... They have cover and the low ground here. Now they gotta find a way to get up. Lawn darts takes out Braden. Shot made from about 200 meters, I think. We're gonna continue our push to our north. Uh, Maybe 150. Right now. Roger. It was closer to 100. Who cares? It's a clean shot. RPG goes into this fortification. Crash Trash and Megatron 31 falling back now. Right. East end of the push is really stalled. If 4 can force more of a retreat out of 2, uh, the red 2, that could be a good play. They're trying to find a way up the hill right now, and they're not going to find one that's not covered. Matter of fact, Caleb hates bagels. And Inky Command are covering this northeast approach into the bowl, where the objective is. Yeah, heavy concentration on the ridge line, Charlie Five Five. The Cheese Man is advancing pretty, uh, pretty aggressively here. Caleb is just waiting for someone to come around. I think he heard some movement. See it? Oh, he spies. He sees Command. He puts a bullet into Inky. He needs to put a second one in there. He doesn't do it. Inky gets away. Looks like he took a ricochet. He turns the corner and ends Caleb. You want me to frag over? Frog taking two kills here. Crest hash in a squad lead. Tootie root down. Megatron needs to hold this. He puts some bullets into Alpha Guido. He puts two of them in there. Megatron takes one in return. He's going to fall back now. Three over bound. Inky calls Semga over to try to close this door, and I think he's going to get in the fight here as well. He's Inky's taking a look here. These guys trying to cr climb this hill. Cheese Man is not going to be able to do it. Two making progress on the east side. Oh, look at that infilating fire. Frederick and Makilla with Cheese. I gotta move out of the way of Stevo. Copy. Oh, that's not Stevo. That's Fahura on the AR there. Potato salad. Lo trying to find these guys, using them the skyline. Oof. No one's noticed him yet. Potato salad might be trying to. Potato salad doesn't see these guys. Really close to command on my north face. Uh, north point, direct north. Look at the Bushmaster. Devo takes out Semga, that means that western approach is still making progress. Fahura back on the AR. 
eyeball in this Bushmaster and pushed it up. I think he's trying to reposition that AR. That rocket missed over by five meters. Bushmaster undeterred is just going to sit there drawing lo rocket fire. No. Meanwhile, west side. Yeah, I've been shooting out the gunners the whole time. Inky takes out Alpha Guido. That's a hat down. Alpha was here, by the way. Inky made that easily long distance shot. I'm pretty sure I want to say that's roughly 200 meters. Yeah, 200 meter shot. Bullpup rifles, my friends. RPG goes in. Looks like it was aimed for the Bushmaster. No obvious damage. It looked like a miss. Command for two, you're able to push in there to the northwest, put some pressure on their back line. Londart's trying to get too motivated to join this fight. The Vic set up watching us. Vehicle with no gunners. They're just going from cover to cover like you should in this position. Frederick could put a... maybe he put a shot on this. He lost it. Steve-O getting up on this gun now. Christian 3 takes out Rago. They're going to reposition some of these guys. Stevo gets into the gun, gets back into the uh, co-driver seat. Lots of AR fire from INS. It's looking pretty bad for Aussies here. Frog takes out Basket of Puppies. Pushing Aussies back into this bowl. The Cheeseman takes out not an NSA spy. Alzadi is just firing up here. Mystic threw a grenade and takes out Megatron, who was holding this ground for the longest time. Kadi throwing a grenade of their own. Looks like it fell short. The Cheese Man takes out Inky. Command is dead. Cheese Man and Frog pushing around jump, jump. the outside of the bowl. Archer takes out Kati, though. Christian takes out Frederick. That's the seaside push. They're taking more chances. They're getting themselves exposed. Look at Christian's position here. Anyone stands up, they're gone for. Frederick just climbed, or just uh, crawled out of cover. And Christian was in the best space to take advantage of it. Frog takes out Skrevsky. More kills for INS as they just slowly close the bowl. Oddball is just driving around, trying to give, I would imagine, giving contact updates. Contacts are still on blue smokes. INS are probably out of rockets or close to it at this point. They've lost rocket soldiers as well. Making progress within 30 meters of the orb. Archer just takes out Mystic right there. Uh, you can see them really push in here. Uh, for this command, my guys are about to assault through the back Andrew, of them, the uh, right now. Three has the biggest element still up. Do you need one? Gillo with cheese takes out Stevo as he takes out Frog. Potato salad finally getting in an oddball got out of the, uh, Bushmaster. He got ended. By potato salad. Op 4 takes out Seneca. Another AR kill. Grenade goes off real close. Look at Fahura. He needs to wake up. Is he crashed out? Oh, okay. Hello, command. I'm taking over for two. We are three effective, I believe. Roger. Roger, can you that back line? Op 4 goes down. Fahura is not paying attention. 
Okay. I think for her, it may crash down. Bushmaster has no gunner in it. Oh boy. The Bushmaster infantry on sandbags. Potato salad just throwing smokes over Christian. I'm taking them for four, excuse me, not two. Sure, if you can push the sandbag I'm shooting at before I go down. Just west of the um, big. Londart's in a long distance fight with Archer here. Londart's top left corner of your screen. Christian goes down to potatoes, or Christian takes out potato salad, gets shot at. Medic, medic, get on this guy. Roger, in the low ground, southwest of four. You will northeast. Christian runs over. Alzadi on top of this hill. For squad two. Roger Brown, try and get you guys moving uh, west there, southwest. Throw grenades in the low ground, over southwest, here? that's where they are. Copy. I wonder what Vahura is doing. I think he's AFK. He turned around, and he hasn't been doing anything since. It's such a shame. Vahura could have really ripped into most of these guys in front of him. Redibus takes out Archer. Giles pops his head up and takes out Christian, looking the wrong way. Might be more. Down to about three... I think it's three... Aussies remaining. One of them is AFK. Raiden and Thorn just camping the orb. Thorn in the middle of the open, trying to move. Ines haven't really popped up here. Two, four. I have a fire team ready to think support. Think is about to die. No, they're not going to look this way. Vahura is camouflaged. Not sure what Redibus is shooting at. There we go. Rib Temp finally looks over and sees an AFK There's player. Top of us. I just killed that guy. They're throwing smokes, they're bouncing far. Raiden and Thorn, the last two. Raiden eating that major radiation there as he sits next to the uh, orb. Down to two for Aussies. Like no one's going to get a chance to ascend this time around. Her knife play didn't work. Oh no. High risk, high reward, I guess. You gotta take your knife out of advance. I've tried knifing people before and that weapon switch sound is a dead giveaway if you do it at if you wait to the last second. Gordon Ryden just sitting in the middle of the bowl here as INS start to get a little bit more confident on this east side. Now they're going to push some people out. Alzadi leaving the charge with Makila with cheese. Thorn is watching east. Doesn't have eyes on anything. Puts his bipod out. Makila with cheese is probably done for. Oh, he's too far away. Makila with cheese. In the cheese man ends Thorn. Dead. Ryan, the last one alive, he's right next to this radiation. Gauss dies. He's at the orb, one at the orb. Cheese man takes out Raiden with a shotgun. And there was a sacrifice, but it means nothing. The round is over. And I think all the players are just going to walk in here and die to radiation. There goes Makila with cheese. For the blood god. Blood for the blood god. Craziness there. 26 kills all told for INS. 11 kills defending Good work. for ADF. Rough. A rough round for ADF there. We're going to switch teams. And we're going to do it all over again for round two. Round two coming up shortly. You're on squad ops.
All right, I just realized that... Uh... Sorry, I was doing a little other looking here. Uh, we're still waiting for people to get set up. I was just doing it looking, and I cannot believe what I'm seeing. There is a... I've been watching a lot of this map randomizer stuff for, like, Metroid. Super Metroid. And I know that I've seen Link to the Past and Super... Uh, Super Metroid randomizers before as well. I did not know that there is a randomizer that combines Zelda, the, the first Zelda game, the first Metroid game, Link to the Past, and Super Metroid. I did not know that. It is a quad randomizer. Bruh. That is wild. I never knew that was a thing. Insane. Cool. Uh, let's go ahead and reset for round two. All right, we're back for Guilty Spark round two. We've got the team switched. Inky running INS this time. Londart's running the defense with Aussies. And uh, round one was pretty lopsided, do you have to say? Only 11 kills for Aussies there? I'm not sure about that. I think it's a little, uh, little much. I think it's a little much. Uh, anyway, with that said, we're going to go ahead and roll into the map here. I'll give you guys a preview of what's happening for round number two. So, round two, we're going to see a north deployment for INS. Means they will start at Bravo 1. And, of course, we will see the uh, Aussies defending the sector here. Now, with the north deployment, Aussies can't go across the river to fight, right? Let's see if we can... Oh, God, the Aussies aren't even set yet. <laughs> they just moved out all of their stuff right now. Oh, boy. <laughs> so... With the North deployment, you're not going to have... Christian, are you playing? You can't be in the stream right now, my dog. At least you're on INS. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you're... You can watch the stream after you die, but not before the round goes live. Come on, man. Okay, so, with the, all right, I got you, buddy. Okay, so, like I was saying, the defense line for Aussies is this river and south of it, inside this grid. If you're deploying from the north, as INS are, they can just roll up on this entire ridge line with a sizable force, maybe a squad here, maybe a squad here, maybe even a squad here. And then if you can do it fast enough and organized enough, you could cause some major problems. And then as INS, you just get to choose which element runs first. You have the direct element here that can just run down this road. Uh, you've got an element here. Your your eastern element is going to have to make a little bit of a detour. Uh, I think they can jump down this way. But basically, all you got to do is you just pick an element to move, use two others to cover, 
But, you know, now that I think about it, the, the big question is, what do you do with the element across the river? So say, like, you get across the river. You have someone here. And let's say you have a def an, an overwatch position there. And you rush... across the river. Then what do you do with your two elements? You have to... I think you have to establish some sort of... presence on the hill. Otherwise, you have to move both of these elements at the same time. So you move this element first, and then you have to move these two elements at the same time. For that to really work. And the element that gets pushed up front here really has to do a lot of damage. Doesn't look like they're going to go for that at all, though. We have Inky. Looks like he's indicating that he wants to do a full west push, north to south, in the low ground, and then come up for air. This could work out. Uh, let me turn off the in-game sound so we can hear our... So you can hear me talk about stuff and stuff. Me fight the freaking audio engine noise. I mean, there are some ways to get up here on the east. Or sorry, the west. Um, obviously, you got this draw here. You got this draw here. You got another draw on the backside. The problem is, if Aussies decide to hold this ridge line, they're also probably holding inside. Once they figure out you're coming from the north, they just fence you in. They don't have to hold this area over here. They could just hold the ridge line that's off camera to the left. Uh, so, actually, here's a better. So, let's see. Round one, we saw defensive positions here. We saw a pretty sizable defensive position up here. And then we saw one down here. Maybe it was more like this. And then we saw them holding the ridge lines here, here. They pushed out uh, off map over here. And then they had command back here. So, I mean, it, it really depends on how defensive Aussies want to be here. Uh, let's go over, I think there might be a briefing happening right now. So let's catch Inky here. Walk me across. Walk me across. Walk me, walk me to our desired location. Damn it. Shit. I don't know what's happening. Uh, Inky is getting ready for a little briefing here. Is there a way down over there? There really isn't. I'm be honest, I don't know how, how. Wait, he's not taking vehicles? There's no way he's not taking vehicles. I, I guess he wants to make... Well, I mean, I guess he can maintain surprise, but... You're going to get figured out, I think. If Aussies have anyone watching North, you're going to get figured out pretty freaking fast. Thank you. Harry, you're getting it up. Uh... I don't know if we have a briefing going on down here, but we're going to listen to the briefing that Inky's about to give right now. Actually, it looks like he's actually, they're setting up the deploy, so I guess I missed the briefing. Whoops. Uh, let's go down here and see if we can catch. There might be a briefing happening right now. I don't hear anything. I think they're all just looking at the orb. Once again, once you get close, you start getting radiation damage. I think they're just all sitting at the orb. Uh, they might be getting a briefing. I can't hear them right now. We're going to go ahead and grab comms.
Wait, we can make our own high ground. Be soon live, Brandon. So they already have it figured out. That's a yeah. thing. Is that an uh, still, uh, finishing up a little bit. I don't think so. Probably still another two minutes. Probably. So, but I'll give you like a last like 10 15 second call. So, you know. all right, so here we go. Um, three lanes, pretty straightforward. Looks like the eastern lane is actually going to attack direct, and then the two western lanes are going to push west. That's a horrible arrow. Fuck me. That's better. No, it's still horrible. It's still horrible. Bro, nice catch. Nice That's still horrible. All right, you guys know what I'm trying to talk about. Here. So you got a element. Looks like they're going to push direct in. Uh, infantry can cross water without penalty. Uh, I'm not going to use vehicles. Uh, what are they doing with this logic down here? Yes. Awesome. Oh, this is an admin driving the Lodgy away. So we got the Bushmasters, they're redeploying here. We got some building coming up. Those are camo. My friends, the camo uh, is a no-go. little uh, update there. Unless they're allowed to use camera, which I don't think they are. That would be wildly based. Yeah, no camera, no wire. Your guys in the Technical delays. Technical delays? Interesting. What I gotta work with. Sometimes you just gotta step in and help these guys out. Let's go check and see if there's any more camo deployed around here. Nope. Nope. At least these guys fixed the problem over here. Wait, what are they building? Oh, just another sandbag. Oh, so they just dug them down by half. That's a cool idea. That's a great solution, actually. Because they don't get the camo, flage, netting in front that hides their position behind the sandbag. And they still get the high cover the sandbag will provide. That's a great compromise. That's good thinking. Seneca putting some sandbags down up here. I guess they're thinking of defending against a south or southern assault. All right, guys, last minute, last minute. Morning. I wonder what Lawn Darts is doing out of position down here. Did he try looking north? What about morning? That's interesting. Uh, look at the points to deployment, so they've used all of the build. And we're live for round two of Guilty Spark. Live call made. INS, move off. Proceeding south along the western side of the map.
Take a look at some of the Aussie defensive positions. They're looking... They're trying to keep pretty much a 360 here. Except for this direct north patch here. There's no sandbags here. They're going to rely on engineers to help build extra sandbags. This is a little cheeky position here. Devo is probably going to start calling out contacts here soon. If not Devo, where'd these guys go? Poyo and Phoenix might be doing that. No, these guys don't have binos. There's no binos on the north side. Oh, no. It's lawn darts here. Ready to open up. They might spot us any second now. Greg Pants might have a laser eye, though, and might be able to see these guys moving in the distance. He's in a great position to lay down some major disruptive fire. Facing us up on the hill. He's only got a, a hollow. But he could still cause some problems. Especially for Bow's element. Because they're going to stick close to the wall here until they cross the river. And if they cross where they want to cross, which I'm pretty sure is... Yeah. They want to cross right here. That's not going to happen. He's going to have to cross in here. Go building the building and then find no space to get up the wall. Charlie, uh, Charlie 581, one times. Facing our direction. Alright, they've spotted Greg Pants. Uh, squad 4 command, can we uh, can we set up a volley fire on those sandbags? Yes, engage at the wheel. Oh, the problem is he doesn't have any lats in his squad, does he? Hearing some Russian here in the chat, I'm pretty sure. Мне бы, блядь, бинокль. Там тебе поставили Не вижу These guys definitely have Euro pings. They're pushing in using that, uh, using a lot of the concealment, as much concealment as they can. Hard to tell if they've been spotted yet, but I imagine it's going to happen soon. This is a really tight defensive posture for Aussies, though. No falling back, no pushing out. It is only defense. And they are in a ring basically all within their inner fob radius. So we're going to have heavy contact. It's going to be inflexible. But it means multiple guns pointing in the same direction. And it means no having to maneuver to get to your defensive position. You're already there. Gives the maximum flexibility to your opponent. Do you still see contacts, K9? Uh, I've lost all sights of contacts. But I mean, there's no realistic way that INS are going to be able to put enough firepower in one position to suppress it and actually move through unless their lats all fire like on the line at the same time. That would be pretty smart, I think. So we have... There's a hat here, and a hat here, and a lat here. Bravo 4 uh, compound, waiting for everyone else to get ready. Okay. Inky's plan so far are working out. No shots exchanged. Got in surprisingly close without. Was that a friendly geo? That was a friendly geo. Red smoke, AR. Friendly GL pops the position. Something's moving. Oh, they're gonna park that thing right on top of the hillside there. Oh, Alzadi. Repositioning a little bit, trying to get more than one gun position. Maybe he's trying to push it further north here. Смотри, Megatron. They spot the Bushmaster. Megatron has a clear shot. It's a pretty small angle here, but Megatron maybe it's shooting up here. 
he shoots the actual oh, yeah. angle. Return fire immediately from Devo. Matter of fact, there's Greg Pants. Basically showering this entire area and they have no cover. They crawl back into the forest. Megatron puts another frag up. Misses Devo. Devo surviving two lat rounds within five meters of his position. Another smoke goes up. And look at that. Diamond, Brayden, and Christian all rock up close. Uh, the rest of Ina starting to get more positions west. Contact with smoke. All the smokes. And here we go. Yep, squad two defending southeast gets rolled over to southwest. See, I look at this angle here. It's pretty much just Devo holding the north here, and he's not even looking north anymore. He's starting to think there's a lot of targets west here. Rocket comes up. Looks like he's just trying to pop sandbags. Alzadi's going to get in the gun here. He's going to try to get on one of the rear seats, I think. Yeah, look at this. He has no angles. The INS have already gotten close enough where the vehicle is not useful anymore. No casualties yet from either team. Just a bunch of suppressive fire. INS have really gotten really close here. They're going to start making their way up the hill. Hope Aussies brought grenades. North side. They're trying to roll their way over. Wait a second. Devo's covering this. It'll be the first kills of the round right here. Shots on Bartok. It's Alpha hiding in the rocks. Alpha gets pinged. They're going to throw a grenade up. C4 charge. But Alpha dies. It's a timed C4 charge, though. They have to back up. Alpha gets the throw off, but Alpha dies to the short thrown grenade. They're gonna crawl away. They get away from it. Devo is just gonna hold the top here. What a great exchange. Too bad it didn't work out for Alpha. This is really the big ingress here. And he heard Inky on the comms. They're gonna wait for out. They're gonna wait for Bow and the North Group to make some more progress. Right now, they're just still trading AR wounds at long range. Oh, they're gonna rotate over. Bushmaster is moving around. Bow goes down. There's a squad lead down from the north. Gals. Gals with the crack shot here. Do you have an access on that side? Yes, we're about to move up here. I'm waiting for a second Charlie team to move up as well. I do think this is the access he wants to use. And Gals is just sitting here. Tanking pot shots at Semga and Megatron. They are causing enough of a distraction, they're distracting at least two ARs now. We're gonna try to flank with my squad here. All of K9. They're gonna start pushing up the element where 
there's no visibility for Aussies. Ooh, a big hit. That was a tandem warhead straight into the Bushmaster. It's a bandit immediately by Alzadi. Vehicle, one times vehicle hit, it's burning. Probably a shot by Bartok right there. That means Frog, Cheeseman, Seneca all start looking this direction and look at Devo still in there. Devo kills Screv, who bleeds out. Probably from a grenade, Bartok and NSA spy both wounded by it. Assault takes down Op 4. Oh no. They didn't abandon the south. They split a team off to try to cause distraction. <laughs> Meanwhile, north side pushing south. We're gonna have to do a wide flank. We can't get up anywhere from that. Go up, go wider. Uh oh, look at Londarts and Redibus. Slowly making progress here. This could be really bad. Everyone on this ridge line is exposed. They hear the vehicle behind them now. Shots coming up. It's suppression. They don't see the targets. Meanwhile, Diamond takes out Greg Pants. Bartok is extremely hurt from that exchange they just had. Giles takes out Diamond. Redibus and Londarts are just doing a drive-by. Rocket misses. Christian kills McKillow with cheese and gows as they make their way up to the top here. Archer takes out Redibus. Big push for INS. Potato salad on this hilltop here. Eats frag from a grenade. Pretty even right now, five to four. Londarts loses his gunner, but just keeps moving. Put your uh, gun on auto, auto fire. But you're gonna need it. Crest trash making their way up. Doesn't see potato salad. Who's right in front of him? There we go. Take your time. Miss all your shots and then die to potato salad. Brilliant. Right, we managed to dislodge some of the defenders. I guess he didn't see him at the last second. Best Ooh, side. grenades coming up the west side. Check. Takes out Andrew with a blind throw up the top of the hill. Maxwell laying into them as they try to climb up. They need, they need support. Booty root in the near ground. Mystic responds with a grenade of his own, takes out check. Steve O hurt pretty bad there too. Tootie Root supposed to be leading this element. Half his element is behind him. Brayden takes out Brown Bear. Right. Aussies are still holding the south a lot more than the north. Christian takes out Pollo Mahato. Look at Felix. Walking into the smoke here. Potato salad knows he might be done for. Is able to take one with him before he goes down to Christian. Another kill for him. Felix on the... That was a grenade. Close in grenade. Felix is close to being able to sweep around this entire element. Start taking people out. Assault goes down to nightmares. MG3. Felix! Yeah. Didn't... Have all the luck in the world goes down to Braden's RPK. Get some space for you. Steve O and Tootie Root blocked. They're in the deflate here. Okay, guys, so we're trying now from east, but looking bad. Rim temp in the chat. He had a nade for that trench. Uh, by potato and it hit a bush. Uh, naded yourself. Uh. Rough. Oh, just go back in, I just that in. Those things happen. INS pulling away now. 12 kills to 7. 12 kills to 8. As Killer J takes out Thorn.
Here comes lawn darts. No gunner. Just gonna cause distractions for this west approach. Uh, I don't think. Very slowly, east side, INS are gonna realize that it's time to stand up and start shooting. The problem is they have to shoot into all the bushes that are in front of them. Bartok is still up. Like around us right now. Morak is still up. You should be able to see it if you peek up your head real quick. I, I, I poked my head south and I just got lit the fuck up. Morak at range. Guess he doesn't have any uh, rockets. No, I'm just shooting bushes at the minute. You killed him. No, look no, at no. War Daddy. Where is he going? He's crawled his way up. Here comes Basket of Puppies. Inky takes out Gunmoon. Command with a kill. Always good to see. Apollo and Dizzy Dwarf, are, Dizzy Dwarf are still stuck down the ramp. Stevo and Tootie Root haven't moved for five minutes now. Christian, Caleb hates Bagels, and Brayden. Vehicle maybe sees us. Shit. He's moving towards us. Run back, run back. A little scared of the vehicle without a gunner. INS are trying to close. No, we're not. We, Steve and I are kind of stuck. Okay. Try to make my own way if I can. The northern element has to make a push here. Let's take a look over here. Nightmare's got himself a decent little been, position. Yeah, you could run past me and get underneath this ridge I'm in front no, of. No, no, he's past that berm to your south. He, he's posted up on a hill and taking pot shots at him. Kati goes down to Christian from the west side, or the east side, rather. I think Maxwell just got lit up by Raiden in the foreground here. RPG goes in straight towards. I think that might have been a miss. Grenades thrown by Frog. In the foreground here, Frog takes down one. Inky wants no more subtlety. All the smokes and let's go in was the call you just heard on command comms there. INS not aggressive enough on this high ground. But Frog just causing problems. Braden Christian have a little fight here with Frog. Nightmare takes out Frog. Look at that. The push out, uh, problem solved by Nightmare. Who gets tagged by someone else has to go prone and down into cover. Steve O and uh, Tootie Root finally get out of a uh, problematic situation. All right, everyone, start to move. We have them in a surround. Tootie Root and Steve O popping up the hill here. Londarts just hops on the gun and takes out Semga. Gets out of the gun immediately as he's hit. Has to crawl down. Takes a little bit more damage here. But he'll be able to save himself with a bandage. I think he's done trying to shoot from this thing. Alzadi takes out Steva with a grenade. Gunner on the Vic to the south is either out or dead. Nice rack. Big Rago with a one tap from range on to Nightmare. It could be the big lidge pin for this entire push off the uh, off the edge of the bowl. Look at Ines's big Rago takes out Raiden. Raiden tried to peek there. Where's Rago at? Sheesh. Look at Rago's position. He had these guys dead to rights as soon as they stood up. 
RPG goes out. Towards lawn darts. Frag misses, but it does damage the Bushmaster. Lawn darts. Isn't aware that he's about to be shot in the back. Fifteen to thirteen. Lawn darts back in the Vic. Lawn darts just using the vehicle to move from cover to cover. It's probably the best thing he's got. Inky trying to get in a position to kill these guys in the low ground. A grenade would not go amiss here. Rago and Killer J, along with Maxwell and Mystic, are the big problems here for the INS force. Once they start picking up over this ridge line, they can really make problems for them. Matter of fact, Big Rago just took a shot at uh, someone. I think he just took a shot at Lundarts just went right over Inky. They are in this little divot. I am talking to is... Get to them. <laughs> oh, there's local being exchanged? Seneca, uh, two, tell Seneca canines coming for him. Hey, Seneca! Canines coming for you. You better be scared, little boy. No, you make a move, asshole! I'm going to win my feet over here! Mystic takes out Brayden, but in the background, Killer J goes down. Little. Big Rago turns around. Don't you do it. Oh! Inky crawls up. Right Seneca just zoning in, triangulating that voice. Calls the cheese man. Ward 80 takes out Mystic. Oh no, these guys just went south and these guys' bushes just became problems for them. Lon is just driving over, trying to get as much information as possible. Cheese man takes out Tootie Root. Inky takes out Seneca, though. Steve-O dead, also. Inky now the closest person to the objective. Within 60 meters. Lon eating some shots here. Arthur takes out Maxwell. Man exit at the Bushmaster. Inky sees Lawn Darts exiting the Bushmaster, maybe takes some shots at him, does, and knocks out Lawn Darts. Command violence. Wins again. Contact north side of the Vic uh, by the sandbags. Archer. Is it a machine pistol? He's suppressing with a machine pistol. Based. Big Rago gets hit. Down to the last few. It's Cheese Man, Big Rago, and Alzadi. Devo also holding that south. He still hasn't looked north yet. Frederick goes down. The Cheese Man goes down. Rago. They're close into Rago now. Morak is on the chase. Behind the sandbag. Morak runs past Big Rago. Christian called it out. Enemy close. Oh, I'm close to the orb there. They're really close to the orb right now. Rago's got to be careful. He gets radiation. Rago goes down the NSA spy. The orb is open. But I think there's only two Aussies remaining. It's just Devo and Alzadi, and Alzadi's not even looking the right way. Devo is the only one covering that orb right now. Christian goes in. Inky takes out, is taken out by Alzadi. Christian just jumps on the orb and doesn't sacrifice himself. He doesn't understand the, doesn't understand the op. So Alzadi and Devo, last two remaining. NSA spy my crawl. One time's contact that was close to Inky's location. He was pushing southwestern side of the hill. NSA spy goes on the... And dies. NSA spy... Becomes reborn. Everyone in this squad gets to come back.
Alzadi goes down though, and it's just Devo remaining. Uh, good job, again. I don't think Devo's made a. Sh oh, Bartok found him out. And that is going to do it. Pretty lopsided victory here, but a little bit closer than round one. 25 to 18. And an inconsequential touching of the orb again. And with that, we have completed today's operation. Thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, let me just take a look at the calendar because I feel like there's some more things that got posted on here. If not, they will be soon. Uh, we have an operation next Wednesday, Depot Red. Next Saturday's op is 2045 Eastern, Gold Shield. That seems new. Cemetery Hill, the 23rd. Crayon Eaters for the 26th at this time slot. Then I wonder if we have November. We have nothing posted for November yet. That should be posted soon. We also have some SOC courses in the works. FTL tomorrow. Uh, basic next week, 1730 Eastern. Crayon Eaters. Oh, we do have a scenario Sunday. It's the 20th. So sign up for that as soon as you can. These slots will go fast. Battle of Veg Hell. World War II scenario in squad. Could you imagine? Anyway, thank you guys so much for being here. This is B Car. I'll see you guys next time.